Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about our work, how performance issues are caused and resolved, an empirical study from a design perspective. It is a collaborative work with Fudan University, Nanyang Technological University, and a software performance and scalability consulting company. Software performance measures how effective is a software system with respect to time constraints and allocation of resources. Better performance can result in long-term execution, memory bloat, and even program crash. According to the previous study by Zama et cetera, users are more likely to switch to competitors' products due to performance issues than due to other general types of issues. Since performance issues are so important, there are many previous studies that investigated the root cause and resolutions of performance issues. However, these studies have two limitations. First, they usually focused on a specific type of performance issue. A comprehensive understanding of all types of performance issues is still lacking. Also, the previous works usually focused on performance issues that can be fixed by a few lines of code revision. Smith and Williams pointed out that performance issues have their roots in poor architectural decisions before coding is done. Our observation of around 200 real-life performance issues show that a significant portion of performance issues require complicated design-level optimization instead of localized code revision to ensure both performance improvement and code quality. However, empirical study regarding design-level optimizations is largely insufficient. Therefore, we are motivated to answer three related questions. First, what are the common root causes of real-life software issues? Is each type well addressed in existing literature? Second, are the performance issues addressed by design level optimization? If so, how? Third, what is the return on investment for fixing performance issues? The key contributions of this study include, first, this study reviewed eight common root causes and resolutions to performance issues that are unsurveyed 60% related articles that investigated these root causes. Second, this study provides empirical funding of design level optimizations that are necessary for addressing performance issues. Third, this study measures the return on investment for addressing performance issues. Next, this study proposed a new modeling technique named design, Deep Design Structure Matrix for analyzing design level optimizations. Finally, this study contributes a rich, high quality data set of 192 performance issues. This study based on five widely used open source projects from Apache software community, including PDF Books, AVRO, EV, Collections, and Groovy. We selected these five projects because they are from different domains, and performance plays an important role for all of them. Their source code and the bug tracking system are also well organized. Our approach is composed of four major steps. First, collect the performance issues. Second, annotate the issue reports and categorize the issues by root cause. Third, Analyze the design level optimizations by using the modeling technique. And finally, analyze the return on investment of performance issues. I will explain each step in more details in the next pages. For collecting performance issues from the five projects, first, we apply the performance keywords matching on the issue from the Jira bug tracking database as shown on the image as below. Next, we manually verified these issues selected by keywords to exclude false positives. Finally, we, we, we retrieved the code revision that addressed each performance issue from the version control system, which is GitHub, uh, in this study. Issues without linked resolutions are excluded. The remained 192 issues as a data set of our study. To understand these issues, we manually inspected and annotated five key aspects of information, including the symptoms, root cause, 
proper solution, profiling data, and other aspects of concerns. Next, we manually reviewed and summarized the code resolution of each issue. Finally, we categorized promise issues into different types based on their root cause. Also, we performed an extensive literature review to evaluate how well each root cause is addressed in existing literature. We found 60 papers that investigated root cause. The, the details for selecting uh, articles relevant to detecting and solving real life pharmacy issues are in our paper. By analyzing the code resolution of each issue, we observed that some issues are addressed by a few lines of code revision in a single source file, namely localized optimization. For example, on the right side figure, on line 10, it added a brick to jump out of the loop to avoid unnecessary execution. The other issue addressed by reviewing, revising a group of source files simultaneously, namely design level optimization. In order to understand the design level optimization, we leveraged a new modeling technique called Diff Design Structure Matrix the DDSM. As shown on the red graph, the rows and the columns represent the source files, which are ranked in the same order. The green background uh, means the newly added files. In each cell, the green plus symbol means the following dependency is newly added. Similarly, the red minus symbol means the following dependency is removed in this, in this revision. We will, we will discuss this example in later slides. The calculation of a DDSM is accomplished, accomplished by three main steps. First, we generate two versions of the code before and after revision. Next, we recover the structural dependencies among source files, then compare the two DSM and highlight the added and removed source files and uh, dependencies. The final step is to evaluate the, the return on investment. The investment is measured by the number of involved developers and the number of discussions. Usually, the more involved developers and discussions represents the more di difficult the issue to be addressed. The return is measured by the improvement of response time and throughput. We acknowledge that there are other meaningful measurements for investment and, and return. We focus on these metrics because they can provide meaningful information and easy to measure. We identified eight types of root causes that recur in the performance issues in our dataset. As we can see on the right side figure, the, uh, there are four prevalent root causes. Each accounts for about 20% of our issues. The first, uh, first one is inefficient data structure that consumes a large amount of memory or takes a long time. The second one is repeated computation that produces the same output. The third one is inefficiency under special, special cases. Sometimes the program runs well for most of the common cases, but it becomes extremely slow or causes memory bloat under special cases. The last type is general inefficient computation, but uh, which is usually addressed by algorithmic improvements. The other four types of root cause and their typical resolutions can be found in our paper. The impl impl implication is that practitioners should be aware of the common root causes that recur in different projects when they fix performance issues. This awareness also helps Develop, uh, practitioners to prevent performance issues in software design and development instead of treating performance as an afterthought. As we have mentioned before, we performed an extensive literature review. In the six papers that investigated the root cause of performance issues, the most prevalent studied root cause is multi thread blocking. And as we can see on the rest of the table, each type of issues has existing tools. Developers may benefit from this automatically detecting and fixing tools when facing similar issues. However, these proposed tools have several potential limitations. First, 
the proposed tools have not been tested and compared to each other uh, on a large scale real life data set. Second, tools are limited to, to projects in certain programming languages, such as Java and C. Third, the availability and the usability of these tools are not promised because only none of them, which are highlighted in the table, have links to download and install. RQ2 focused on design level optimizations. First, we analyzed the, dis the distribution of localized and design level optimization in each project. The upper portion of each bar shows the percentage of design level optimizations, and the lower portion of each bar shows the percentage of localized optimizations. Uh, when you was getting by projects, we found that each project, except collections, have 28% to 67% issues that are optimized in design level. We conjecture that collections does not have design level optimizations because it's a simple GDK library and does not deal with complicated interactions among domain elements. The figure on the right side shows the distribution of localized and design level optimizations based on different root causes. Uh, all the root causes, except inefficient iteration, have 22% to 67% issues that are optimized in data level. Based on many inspection, uh, inefficient iteration does not have data level optimization because uh, they only need to add a few lines of code to implement the conditional break. Practitioners should be aware of the need of design level optimization. So this need can be impacted by the nature of projects as well as nature of root causes. We reviewed four patterns of design level optimization. The first pattern is introducing classic design patterns. That is, developers can address some performance issues and achieve good design at the same time by using well-known design patterns. In this example, which you have seen earlier, this issue of AVRO is caused by inefficiency on the special cases. Since binary encoder is really slow when processing small data chunks, to figure this, to figure this out, developers added three new files, which are highlighted in green background. These three files from the design factory design pattern. Row three, the buffer one, is more efficient to deal with large data chunk uh, because it uses buffer to speed up. Row four, the direct one, is more efficient to deal with small data chunks without buffering because it saves memory space. Row five, the interface, is in charge of picking the right encoder uh, with, with respect to the size of the input. Actually, this issue can also be, ad be addressed by a localized solution with complicated if else statements. <clears throat> However, this will lead to, lead to a notorious design problem, namely the good class. Another typical pattern is change propagation. The root cause of is the issue is addressed in one single source file, namely the optimization core. The optimization core propagates changes to a group of other files that are structurally connected to the core file. Change propagation has two subtypes. In type one, the propagated files benefit from the change of the core. In the left side, left side example, the optimization core is the class matrix at row one. It suffers from repeated commutation of matrix production and it propagates changes to the files from row two to row four. In type two, the optimization core propagates changes to a group of other such files that a core file depends on. In the right side example, the optimization core is PD abstract content stream at row two. Uh, it suffers from an uh, inefficiency under special cases to figure, this, to figure this out. The developers created a new utility, utility class named number format util. Um, it's used by the optimization core. Another typical pattern is optimization clone. In this case, the same performance issue root cause is cloned in multiple locations of the code base. We notice that the involved source files are usually structurally independent from each other. In, in the example on the right side figure, 
All the classes in this change is a certain type of font. All the classes have a method named get bounding books, which suffers from repeated computation. The method is cloned in seven font classes. Therefore, the optimization is also cloned in the seven locations. The last pattern is parallel optimization, where developers made parallel improvement in multiple locations that suffer from different root causes. As we can see on the example, class PD font on row one added a cache to avoid repeated computation. Class cost number at row three uses a direct table lookup to replace the inefficient hash map data structure. Each source file has, uh, here contains a separate optimization, but all belongs to the text extraction component. We have also investigated the prevalence of each data level optimization pattern for addressing different root causes. As we can see on the rest of the graph, the applications of the four patterns of addressing different root causes are quite different from each other. The majority of the design level optimization are change in propagation at a different type of root cause that can be, uh, can be applied to address it. Optimization clone is not applied for addressing inefficiency under special cases. We conjecture that it is because special cases will be treated specifically so that optimizations would not be cloned. Class exam pattern does not apply for addressing inefficient data structure and a general inefficient computation. Since data structure and algorithm, algorithmic optimization usually locates inside a single source file. Parallel optimization mainly applies for general inefficient computation, inefficient data structure, and repeated computation. We conject that it is because these three root causes can be resolved by short code revisions. After three investigated the return on investment for fixing performance issues. Overall, we found that the majority of performance issues are addressed by one or two developers with less than five discussions. Also, most of the performance issues have less than 10 times of pro improvement. Then we compared the return on investment between localized and design level optimizations. The red curve represents the design level optimization, and the blue curve represents the localized optimization. However, uh, we, found, we, we found that the design level optimization is more difficult to implement. However, the design level optimization has slightly lower performance improvement compared to the localized ones. Based on the observation of other aspects of concerns, we conjecture that design level optimization reflects quality trade-offs between performance and other quality attributes, such as reliability and maintainability. Finally, we compared the return on investment for different root causes. As we can see on the legend table, Denser color means a higher value. In general, we found that different root causes each, uh, have very different return on investment. The details are in our paper. The, the limitation of our, this study include, first, we did, we did not uh, evaluate the actual effectiveness and usability of fixing and detecting tools. Second, the performance improvement is evaluated based on the profiling in each report. Lastly, we acknowledge that there are other meaningful measurements for return on investment. In future, we plan to use our tools in our data set and try to execute and profile the code by ourselves. Also, we will investigate the, the impact of program programming language on performance issues. Here is the conclusion of this study. First, this study investigated 192 performance issues. They are categorized by eight types of recurring root causes. 33% of these performance issues require design level optimization they, that are manifested in four typical patterns. We found that the localized optimizations provide higher return on investment, but design level optimizations is necessar necessary for achieving long term term ben benefits such as good design and maintainability. Thank you, thank you very much for the listening.